Hello everyone, welcome to Montgomery High School's 8th grade virtual parent orientation. My name is Paul Papaduke and I'm the principal here at Montgomery High School. We welcome you here tonight and hopefully you're not a stranger. Hopefully you've been around the building at various athletic events and or plays or other co-curricular types of activities. Some of you may have had children who have graduated here prior. Whether or not you've been here or had a child, I'm going to guarantee you that we will do our very best to provide your kid with an excellent high school experience. Montgomery has changed quite a bit since I came here in 1996. We had graduated classes go from 100 to 400, academic scores have risen, co-curricular activities have expanded, football, marching band have become a reality. We have also added and entertained our social and emotional learning initiative through district and high school strategic plans. Through all of our growth and change, I like the one thing that has remained constant. We have great teachers, talented students, and supportive parents and a community committed to providing the very best for its children. So what do you have to look forward to when your children are coming into ninth grade as freshmen? I envision all of our students waking up each morning wanting to come to school, a place where they feel welcomed and connected, a place that will serve as their second home. And I'm extremely hopeful and optimistic that all students will be back in school as we regain some sense of normalcy this September. There are teachers, counselors, coaches, advisors, and administrators who really care about our students. We have a challenging curriculum with an outstanding facility and an outstanding faculty who focus on fostering a welcoming and engaging climate while continuing to challenge each student to reach his or her potential. MHS provides a plethora of social, academic, and extracurricular opportunities. Preparing our students for an unpredictable future, one in which the types of available jobs have yet to be created, may seem like a daunting task. However, if we can give our students the skills to tackle complex problems and situations, develop autonomy, foster the growth of students' social and emotional skills, and value the correlation between hard work and reward, they'll have the tools to experience future success. Here is a sample schedule. As you can see, freshman students will typically have the following classes, math, social studies, physical education, English, science, study hall, an elective, and a world language. Study hall is mandated for all students. It is not optional. Like UMS, we have a block schedule here at the high school. One of the advantages of our block is that teachers during unit lunch work collaboratively in teams, where student growth and learning are the center of professional discussions, enabling all students to benefit from the best available practices and have a similar educational experience. Student stress is reduced as they navigate through a schedule of four classes per day, similar to the schedule they'll have in college. The longer classes allow teachers to better differentiate their instruction with innovative activities and delve into content more deeply. The classes also help teachers form better relationships with their students, helping them to develop the social and emotional skills that they need. Resilience is defined as responding well to adversity and having the ability to recover from or adjust to changes and transitions. Empathy is understanding and sharing in feelings of others, applying pro-social behaviors to benefit others. Serving the community is the ability to identify areas of need in the broader community and make positive contributions to school, community, and beyond. Bettering student skills in these areas will aid their development in high school and greatly benefit them as they move on to the next stages of their lives. As a principal, I am passionate about creating structures and experiences for students that will enable them to become more resilient. As a parent of two boys, one in high school and one in college, I spent a good amount of time thinking about what I can do to foster resilience and evaluate how my actions and reactions impact my son's development in that area. What happens when they experience adversity? Do I give them the space necessary to handle their problems on their own? Do I throw fuel on the fire by blowing a problem up and out of proportion, making it become a traumatic event when it doesn't have to be? Or do I help them frame the adverse issue as a challenge, 
help them become more flexible and able to deal with it, move on, learn from it, and grow. It is very difficult to watch our children fail, struggle, and work through their issues. We want to take that negative experience away. But in doing so, we may be doing more harm than good. We want them to become successful, happy adults and say that we will do anything to help them make that happen. I fear that maybe we are, at times, not doing the one thing that we should be doing, giving them the opportunity to learn and grow from their experiences on their own. That includes the negative experiences, obstacles and failures that, must, that they must battle through so that they learn how to negotiate with people, compromise and become problem solvers. Having them experience adversity, develop coping mechanisms and solve problems is exactly what they need to develop the resilience necessary to succeed as an adult. Everyone will experience adversity at some point, some of us more than others. What happens to our children? Do they succumb? or do they surmount? I am hoping that mine and yours will surmount. I will continue to try to build capacity in the area of resilience as will the faculty administration here at MHS. As a staff, we are working very hard to develop empathy in our students, putting ourselves in another's shoes, understanding where they are coming from and why they feel the way they do gives us the needed perspective, breaks down barriers, furthers understanding, and provides us with the foundation for growth in equity, inclusion in our society. We suggest that students take advantage of their teachers' extra help days. Students are not limited to attend their own teachers' sessions, and they are encouraged to meet with other teachers who teach the same subject to receive help from someone who may explain the content in a slightly different manner. There are no teams here at the high school, so students will be in classes with many different students throughout the day. There may be a grade differential between high school and middle school. Some students may receive their first B or C in a particular class. Please realize that this is part of getting acclimated to high school. Support your children in their academic and social growth with compassion and understanding. We also have semester grading here at MHS. This means that you'll receive two report cards rather than four. This decision has reduced stress for students and staff and eliminated the need to cram tests and projects in at the end of randomly set marking periods in November and April. As your children begin to select their high school courses, many of you may be wondering how many honors courses should we take and how much we should be, our children should be pushed and stretched. Students should take upper le level courses that they have the skill set to handle and courses that they have a genuine, pa genuine passion and interest in. Students are not locked into one track. A student who performs well in a CP course may take honors the following year. There is faulty information that is circulated about the community regarding AP and honors classes. Students have expressed to us that their parents and outside college consultants have told them that they need to take eight or more AP classes along with a bunch of honors classes to get into the top schools. This is just not true. We've had students attend Ivy League schools without taking eight APs. When your children are scheduling, please keep in mind their social and emotional needs. There is enough stress on our kids without being overtaxed academically. There is a line between challenging and overscheduling. We conducted focus groups with our juniors and seniors to gain their feedback around their academic load and experience. They told us that they wish they hadn't scheduled some of the upper level courses that they had no interest in. They also said that the community and parent pressure to take these courses is unbearable. They asked us if there's anything we could do to make it stop and to educate their parents. They stated, quote, our parents are killing us, unquote. Over my 25 years here in Montgomery, I've always made it a point to listen to the students. I'm hoping that you will do that as well. Trust the guidance counselors to help set a schedule that is appropriate and balanced to meet the needs of your children. As you navigate through freshman year, you may have questions about your child's classes. If you have an issue, speak to the teacher first. 95% of all problems can be resolved at this level. Building positive relationships between students, staff, and parents is extremely important. Your counselor may assist you in this process. If you aren't satisfied with the results after talking or meeting with the teacher, contact their department supervisor, who you'll meet tonight. 
After the meeting with the supervisor, you may contact the principal if things aren't resolved. Please follow this chain of command. If you contact me or a supervisor first, we're going to direct you back to the teacher. That concludes my portion of the presentation. Moving forward, you're going to hear from a number of people discussing course requirements, expectations, and offerings. I hope that you'll find the information useful, and I hope that it will give you a glimpse of what is to come for your freshmen. I wish you a wonderful evening. I hope that your children and you can return a little bit to normalcy, and we look forward to seeing them all in September. At this point, I'd like to turn the program over to Mrs. Corey Gaylord, our Director of Counseling and Academic Affairs. Corey. Good evening, and welcome to Montgomery High School. We so look forward to welcoming the class of 2025 uh, to experience all the wonderful opportunities that there are for them here. And um, again, welcome. To support the vision of the Counseling Guidance Department, we believe it starts with a relationship. We start meeting with our counselees as early as eighth grade, although this year that will be totally virtual. Each year, we will implement programs in ninth grade about their preferred learning style, in 10th grade, we help students understand who they are by helping them complete a personality inventory, which we can link to specific careers. And in the junior year, we begin the college application process. Every step of the way, we invite parents and guardians to be a part of this process. Learning is certainly a family process and one that we support. Communication is also a key to supporting the MHS guidance vision. My eBlast, the MHS guidance newsletter, which goes out every marking period, will keep you informed and in the know. The latest four newsletters are available online on the MHS Guidance website, and we encourage you to contact us should you have any questions. To receive a diploma, students must complete 120 credits. Full year courses equate to five credits, semester courses to 2.5. You will notice, if you are really quick at math, that the credits listed do not add up to 120 credits. That leaves room for additional elective courses that may help fulfill the required number of credits to graduate. And this is an area where students can look into some of the things that they're really interested in. This next slide shows you a form that we can use to make sure to keep track of the high school graduation requirements. And we can provide this form for you if you are interested. Mission transition. We have this this evening to inform you, the parents. March 2nd through 7th, uh, students will be able to, eighth, current 8th graders, rising 9th graders, will be able to choose their electives online. That information went, went out to you last Thursday. Rising freshmen have the opportunity to choose their electives, and then they will meet with their high school counselors the week of March 8th through 12th. Uh, this, at this time, they will be discussing their academic courses as well as their choices of electives. We have a student group at MHS called the People Project, and they will help with the transition as well. In addition, there are peer leaders, and um, this is a very important group for our incoming freshmen because they meet with them regularly during their freshman year. They're a wonderful group of students, and I know that uh, Mrs. Green when she is, uh, speaks to you tonight, that she will fill you in on more information. Um, there will also be many opportunities to sign up for extracurricular activities. We are currently um, working on rec recording some uh, information about extracurricular activities. We're going to make available a video about electives. And we have some students putting together a virtual tour of the high school, which I think will be very helpful. Our guidebook for freshmen only is available on the guidance website. This lists um, information from the program of studies uh, that are specific for freshmen in addition to some other important information. It also includes the courses that are available for freshmen. Thank you so much for coming this evening. Uh, we really wish we could meet you in person and we look forward to doing that at some time in the near future. I'd like to now introduce you to Mr. Jeffrey Brooks, our Supervisor of Technology. Good evening, I'm Jeff Brooks, Supervisor of Technology, and I'm here to talk to you about our Bring Your Own Device initiative at Montgomery High School. MHS is a BYOD program. 
Cloud-based technologies make this possible, primarily Google Suite tools. Increased student responsibility and comfort when our students use their own devices, gearing our students for post-secondary education. I'd like to talk to you about some basic tech specs. Windows or Mac laptops, Chromebooks, and tablets we have found are our best choice for devices. Students can use phones as backup devices, but they do not make a good primary device. Some required tech specs are Windows 10, Mac OS 10.13, Chrome OS, Android 7.0, or iOS 10. A device should have three to six hours of battery life. The device must be able to access the apps Google Chrome, Zoom, G Suite tools such as Drive, Docs, Sheets, and Slides, Google Classroom, Calendar, Google Meet, and Gmail. The device should have a PDF reader, be able to utilize earbuds or headphones. We found we recommend a device of at least eight inches of screen size and with a keyboard, whether a virtual or physical keyboard, though we find physical keyboards are best. If using a tablet, we recommend a Bluetooth keyboard. The device also needs an integrated camera and microphone and an ebook reader. Thank you very much. And next we go to our supervisor of special services, Ms. Daryl Schwenk. Good evening. My name is Daryl Schwenk and I'm the supervisor of special services here at Montgomery High School. Welcome. Here at the high school, we offer a full range of programs for eligible students. The programs include in-class replacement, replacement courses, and a comprehensive language learning disabilities program. Transition planning starts in ninth grade as we are planning for your child's post-secondary decisions. Every student has a learning plan that is discussed with their case manager and their school counselor, and we are welcome to meet with you at any time. Career planning and work study and related services are also provided in response to individual student needs. The high school child study team will continue to case manage their respective students for their entire high school career when possible. We will have retreats throughout the year to ensure our planning and supporting our students. Thank you. We look forward to working with you this coming year. Next up, we have Karen Stolowski, the English supervisor. Hi, everybody. I am Karen Stolowski. I am the English supervisor here at the high school. Um, so for ninth grade English, <coughs> uh, pretty simple com uh, choices for the students. So we do have one elective opportunity. They can choose the combination of expository writing and or creative writing, uh, which is kind of fun if, they, if you have any students who really like writing. But as far as English class goes, it's basically two choices. It's either English Literature and Composition 9 um, or English Literature and Composition 9 Honors. Both of those courses will have summer reading assignments and that will be posted on the English Department website sometime in June. So keep an eye out for that regardless of class choice, you will have a summer reading assignment. Um, with regard to English 9 honors, there are prerequisites. Um, you have to have a 93% at the end of marking period 2 in UMS 8th grade language arts. Um, everything more details than that is available in the program of studies on the MHS counseling webpage. Students who wish to take English 9 honors but do not meet the prerequisite have the opportunity to submit a waiver application and then they will sit for a writing assessment which will be evaluated and then possibly placed into honors. This is the same assessment that they will take if they are interested in World Studies honors and Ms. Hodgson, the Supervisor of Social Studies, will reiterate that later. Information about this writing assessment and the waiver process will be available through the UMS in the coming weeks. So, thanks so much for coming tonight and listening. Um, up next, we have Ms. Jen Riddell. She is the supervisor of mathematics at high school. Hi, welcome again. I'm Jen Riddell, the high school math supervisor. Um, I just have the one slide highlighting some courses that you will all be coming up to and enjoying here at the high school next year. Uh, many of our students are coming up with different backgrounds in math from grades five through eight. Please know that we have the right math course in place for all of you, no matter what your background is. We want all the students to have the best experience with the course content while meeting success and having the right balance of challenge in place for them. 
So if your student has just finished up the pre-algebra curriculum, we do have a full year Algebra 1 course, and there's a lab attached there so that the students see math every day. Students finishing up the Algebra 1 Part 1 will enroll in Part 2 here at the high school, and it's simply named Algebra 1. Those in some level of the Algebra 1 Part 2 course, you will be coming up and taking geometry with us, a level of geometry. And those in geometry in eighth grade will come up and take a level of Algebra 2 with us. And then we do have some students taking Algebra 2 in eighth grade, but even for the future, those coming out of Algebra 2, we have some great options. We, ha we actually have four options coming out of Algebra 2. We have an Algebra 3 class, we have Advanced Alge and Trigonometry, we have Pre-Calculus, Honors Pre-Calculus, um, so a lot of options. You know, and then further down the road, please know, you know you're going to get to those levels of calculus. We have four levels of calculus, and we do have four electives. We have discrete math, statistics CP, AP, and then we have an honors math methods and engineering course. Um, the majority of our courses now all have ebooks with excellent resources and videos, varied problems. So we do embrace the high school's BYOD. Um, I think at this point all of our students are amazing with technology and um, with all that's going on, so that BYU Dewey, ha having that device for next year will be really important. Um, I want to bring up calculators. So, you know, we do have a calculator on our phone, but it's real important that the students come up with their um, scientific calculator. At the high school level, we're going to get them involved on the graphing calculator. You want your students to be proficient on the calculator. They're going to be going into high stakes testing, whether it be the PSAT or the SAT or any type of state test. So um, they do allow for the calculators and we want the student to be proficient. So bring that scientific calculator to school next year and then we'll get you on the graphing calculator. Um, know that we have lots of opportunities for help during and after school. Uh, we have a very competitive math league team. We do compete in the AMC competitions. And then I'd say lastly, you know, down the road, we have a great SAT prep program after school with amazing teachers. And next up is Ms. Pino, um, the department head for business, technology, and family and consumer science. Hi, my name is Heather Pino, vice principal and supervisor of business technology, family, and consumer sciences. During your time at Montgomery High School, you'll be taking five credits in this area that you will need for graduation. Additionally, you will need a half a year or two and a half credits of financial literacy. We offer everything from introductory computer programming courses to AP computer science, television production, and a variety of baking courses. We have hands-on classes where you can do woodworking and work on small engines, architecture. Our students have created a highlight video for you that you can view by accessing it through the guidance website. There are 11 individual videos that are elective specific under the Program of Studies link on the guidance webpage. I'm really looking forward to the eighth graders coming up next year, and I'd now like to introduce Melissa Hodgson, Supervisor of Social Studies. Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Hodgson, the Social Studies Supervisor, and I'm here to talk about the ninth grade required course, World Studies. Uh, there are two routes for World Studies, college prep or honors. The same content standards are addressed in each course and each course is skilled based. The honors course is a good fit for students who have a strong foundation in critical reading and analytical writing. The college prep course is a good fit for students who would like to further develop these skills. Students may be eligible for subsequent honors and AP courses through either route. Students who do not meet the prerequisite for honors but wish to take the honors course may sit for a waiver assessment which will be virtual this year, and it will be the same assessment that will be used for the English 9 Honors course as well. Uh, information about the writing assessment will be communicated by UMS in the coming weeks. At this time, I'd like to introduce Adam Warshawski, the Supervisor of Visual and Performing Arts. Thank you. Hello, my name is Adam Warshawski, and I'm the Supervisor of Visual and Performing Arts here in Montgomery Township. We are so excited to welcome you and all of your students to our fantastic high school and into our arts program. 
We have an incredible visual and performing arts program at Montgomery High School and are very fortunate to have over 500 students who participate in our music program and another 500 students who participate in our visual arts program. So we have well over a thousand students taking an arts course here at Montgomery High School on a yearly basis. And that is because we value the arts very, very much. And we believe that it makes an incredibly strong and positive impact on your child's education while they're here in high school. There are many opportunities for your students to get engaged in the arts while they are here. On the music side of things, your students can participate in the band, the choir, or the orchestra. We often tell our eighth grade band, choir, and orchestra students that the best way to meet their visual and performing arts graduation requirement is to continue with band, choir, or orchestra when they come into ninth grade. By doing that in ninth grade, not only will they meet their graduation requirement for visual and performing arts, but they will also continue with something that they are already comfortable with, continue with something that they have a great social experience with, and be a part of our music family here at the high school. We also tell our students that it's great to be in the music program in ninth grade because there will be a number of 10th, 11th, and 12th graders who will take them under their wing and make them feel welcome here when they get here as ninth graders in September. We also have an incredible art program. There are many options for your students in the visual arts. We have a, we have a fantastic ceramic studio. We also have a complete studio arts sequence, starting with introduction to studio art and working all the way up through AP studio art. We also have an incredible photography sequence, again, starting with photography one, in which the students will engage in wet photography in a professional darkroom and move all the way up through AP photography using the most advanced technology with digital photography that we offer. And we have an incredible digital 2D design course where students will use the most advanced technology to create artworks that they come up with and enhance using the technology available to them. In addition to our art and music program, students can also be involved in our Drama 1 and Drama 2 classes. In ninth grade, they would start with Drama 1, and that is where students will study theater and acting, and they can also take another course called Public Speaking. There are also a number of fantastic co-curricular opportunities for our students in the arts. We have a National Art Honor Society that students who are involved in our art program can be involved in. It's analogous to the National Honor Society, but it's geared towards our art students. And of course, we also have the incredible Montgomery High School Marching Band, which anybody who's been to a football game has seen them perform. We have a very, very uh, advanced jazz program where there are two jazz bands so that we can offer as many opportunities as possible to our students. And then if anyone's been to see our musical production, you know that we have a very, very complete theater production here at Montgomery High School. We offer both a fall, musical, a fall the theatrical production and a spring musical production. In the spring, there's also the opportunity for our music students to be involved by being in the cast in either a singing role or also being in the pit orchestra playing the music that accompanies the cast as they sing. We really hope that your students get involved in the arts here at Montgomery High School. We are excited to meet them in the fall, and we can't wait to see you here in September. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Ms. Alma Reyes, our supervisor of world language. Buenas noches. Bonsoir. Guten Abend. Salvete, amici. My name is Alma Reyes, and I'm the supervisor of world languages and the English Language Learner Program. On the screen here, you can see the World Language Manual courses available to your students as they enter the high school. Ninth grade students continuing in French, German, or Spanish will be placed in levels one or two based on eighth grade world language course grades and their teacher recommendations. We recommend adhering to teacher recommendations in order to ensure appropriate placement and to support a positive learning experience for your child. Only students that have extensive experience with a language in an immersion setting would be considered for higher placement. These students must inform their middle school counselors who will then 
schedule them for a world language placement test later this spring. Heritage and native speakers will also be evaluated upon request in order to ensure the appropriate course placement. Please note that our courses are not designed for heritage speakers. Our courses are designed for the non-native speaker. Heritage speakers wishing to strengthen their heritage or home language skills will be expected to follow the same curriculum as non-native speakers. All students are strongly encouraged to develop full literacy in their heritage or home language or languages. In senior year, all students able to demonstrate full proficiency in a world language in reading, writing, speaking, and listening, including their heritage, their heritage language or languages, may be eligible to receive the New Jersey Seal of Biliteracy. The Seal of Biliteracy is available to seniors only. In the past, we've had students earn the seal for proficiency in a myriad of world and home languages, such as the languages that we teach here, as well as Russian, Hindi, Korean, and Polish, for example. More information is currently available on the New Jersey Department of Education website and on the high school world language and English language learner web pages. The course progression chart I'm about to display shows you the most common progression through our program and can be found in the world language webpage. In ninth grade, students answer at levels one and two. In 10th grade, they can proceed and enroll in levels two or three. In 11th grade, they progress to levels three or four. And finally, in their senior year, grade 12, they enroll in levels four, five, or AP. If your child hasn't yet made a language selection, we'd like to offer a little insight to help inform your decision. Why study Spanish? Learning Spanish makes you more employable. I'm sure that isn't surprising. Spanish as a business language is hard to dispute. Spanish is the second most spoken language in the United States. With more than 33 million speakers, Hispanics are the largest ethnic group in the United States. In addition, Spanish is the language of 21 countries. There are over 400 million Spanish speakers worldwide. That makes Spanish the second most spoken language in the world. Why study French? 200 million people speak French on five continents and 43 countries. Geographically, French speaking Africa represents an area larger than the United States. France is also the language of culture. French is the international language of cooking, fashion, theater, the visual arts, dance, and architecture. French is the official language of the United Nations, UNESCO, NATO, the Olympic Committee, the International Red Cross, and the International Courts. Why study German? German is currently the only Montgomery High School language that offers an exchange program. Students live with a German family for three weeks in the summer and then host a German partner for three weeks in the fall. Also, college students from anywhere in the world can attend college for free in Germany. The German language is among the 10 most commonly spoken languages in the world. And it's a very important scientific language. 
Germany is also a significant economic entity. Its economy ranks number one in Europe and number four worldwide. Its economy is comparable to that of all the world's Spanish-speaking countries combined. Germany is the world's second largest exporter behind China. Why study Latin? Not only do students learn about classical literature and ancient Roman and Greek history, but they build vocabulary. 60% of English words are derived from Latin. Most scientific and technical terms and most terms expressing abstract concepts come from Latin. Latin students also score significantly higher on verbal and math sections of the SAT. Translating Latin strengthens reasoning, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills. In addition, it's also viewed by the college admissions as serious and rigorous academic study. Our department highly recommends Latin for students who are reluctant to speak publicly, students who are strong in mathematics, or students with varying degrees of autism. Historically, these students experience a high degree of success in our Latin program. The reasons why Latin is a good choice for students with learning disabilities is that Latin places an emphasis on reading, not speaking, so that students see and hear Latin words and sentences and make direct correlations between sound and its written representation. This is a strong support for students who are challenged with auditory ability or phonological coding. Also, Latin pronunciation is consistent. It has a relatively small lexicon and few idioms. Learners of Latin must break words down into their components and analyze them in order to extract meaning. This process not only supports logical sequential thinking, but improves the understanding of language mechanics. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or concerns. You can find my contact information on the school website. Until then, good evening and be well. Hasta la vista y buenas noches. Au revoir. Et bonne nuit. Au Wiedersehen und guten Abend. Bonam Nochte et Palete. Hi, I'm Naoma Green, Vice Principal and Health and Physical Education Supervisor. During my second semester for freshman students, they will have one quarter of health. During this time, the curriculum will discuss substance abuse, coming of age, an introduction to family life, and overall wellness and mental health. During physical education, that will be during semester one and a quarter of semester two. Our PE program is run as an elective model. This is a great opportunity for all students to participate in an active activity that they enjoy. Each student will have a choice of a fitness elective, step aerobics, weight training, yoga, working out with TRX bands, team sports, which will also offer flag football, basketball, soccer, handball, and also a lifetime activity which will be options of mindfulness, elementary games, backyard games, and other recreational activities. Throughout the year, our freshman students will meet with assigned peer leaders. The peer leaders are trained juniors and seniors who will conduct outreach experiences for our freshmen to help transition them to the high school. We are really looking forward to seeing the class of 2024 in the gym with us. Now I'd like to introduce the Director of Athletics, Chris Penna. Hi, I'm Chris Penna, Athletic Director here at Montgomery High School. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about our athletic programs and offerings for our incoming freshmen. We offer over 30 athletic programs during the school year, plus we have a full-time strength and conditioning program in the building. For our fall sports, sign-ups will begin in May. There's a three-step process which is found on our athletic department website. All current eighth graders will start the process at UMS with the nurse in terms of physicals also signing up on Family ID. All fall sports practices begin in mid-August. 
For eligibility, all freshmen are eligible for fall sports. There are no academic requirements. However, all freshmen must be passing 15 credits to be eligible for the spring sports. At the end of the year, freshmen must have passed 30 credits to be eligible for their fall sports in their sophomore year. All freshmen will also go through impact testing, which is a concussion baseline and protocol. Uh, I encourage you to go onto our website to look at Parent Athlete Handbook, as well as to reach out to the coaches in any sport that you think your child is interested in. And I encourage all students to get involved, whether it's with activities or athletics, to have a great experience here at Montgomery High School. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Scott Pachuda, Vice Principal here at the high school. Hello everyone, my name is Scott Pachuda. I'm one of the Vice Principals here at Montgomery High School and I oversee the co-curricular programming. One of the biggest takeaways our seniors say um, is that they wish they got involved in the clubs from very early on. So I highly encourage you to talk to your child and get them involved in our over 30 clubs that range from academic, service, to student government and our visual and performing arts clubs. It's a great way for them to connect to their friends. It's also a great way to connect to the school and to explore a ton of options that they have. It's also a great way for them to start their freshman year of high school uh, on a positive note. I would like to now introduce you to Mr. Jason Sullivan, Supervisor of Science. Welcome. I would like to extend some greetings from the MHS Science Department, wishing all of you and your families well as we uh, continue through this really uh, odd time and get ourselves ready back uh, for in-person schooling. Um, my name is Jason Sullivan. I'm the high school science supervisor here at Montgomery. I would like to start my presentation by outlining a significant change to our ninth grade science program. The class of 2025 will have two course options for their ninth grade year. Uh, that is integrated physical earth and life sciences offered at either the college prep or honors level. The significant change is there is no longer an option of college prep or honors level physics for your ninth grade student. The standard science course sequence will be ninth grade year IPELS, which is the acronym we use for integrated physical earth and life sciences. The choices that you will have for your students are either IPELS at the CP level, which is college prep, or IPELS honors. Uh, as a 10th grader, uh, your student will most likely select a chemistry course, followed by a biology course in their 11th grade year. Along the way, there are also numerous electives available after 9th grade, including a new course that we will have next year for 10th grade, 11th, and 12th graders, that is AP Physics 1. Additionally, there are some elective courses for semesters that are available to juniors and seniors. Next, the science subjects are offered at multiple levels. Uh, this is a change from the heterogeneously mixed classes in science up and through the ninth grade. All classes at Montgomery High School will meet on the A-B block schedule for 84 minutes with no additional lab period. Next is a screenshot of the MHS Science Department website. Please take some time to visit the page to learn more about the New Jersey State Standards in Science and also other important department information like extra help sessions, extracurricular activities, and um, any summer assignments that might go along with courses. Next year for ninth graders, there are no summer assignments, but in the years following that may become uh, something that your student needs to pay attention to. Next is the IPELS course description. The description you see is for the college prep course. The wording is the same for the honors course. However, students would expect to have more mathematical rigor and unique challenges that raise course expe expectations to the honors level. Otherwise, the description that you see in there is closely aligned with the New Jersey State Standards in Science and encompasses the three dimensions that you will see in all science classes. That is, disciplinary core ideas, those are the typical things that we think of in the science of the facts and the figures and the information that you need to learn. There are also cross-cutting concepts where we look for patterns and other connections to other departments. 
and concepts. And then finally, uh, we place a very high emphasis uh, aligned with the standards on the science and engineering practices. So developing your student's ability as a science thinker is one of the key course expectations in ninth grade and will continue on through high school. The final slide talks about really choosing the right course at MHS in science and really for that matter in any subject. Many subject areas have new options that have honors levels and other levels like college prep. Please carefully consider how to build a challenging course of study that also maintains a reasonable workload. The mental and physical well-being is of equal importance as your student's intellectual well-being. Try to look for a really good balance. You can see there are a few suggestions on the slide that look at how you might make those, recommend, or those course choices. Carefully consider your eighth grade teacher's recommendations. Look at past performances in science and in mathematics too. Uh, look at that reasoning capacity. Um, and look at your student's academic maturity. How independent are they? How eager? And uh, do they have some interest in a particular subject? If they find science really interesting and are passionate about it, then that might be an area where you choose to look for a little bit more rigor. Discuss some course options with those who have completed the course. This year will be unique for your students because no student has ever taken the IPELS honors course. So you'll have limited background from others that would uh, be able to uh, help you make that decision. You can expect that the rigor in that course will be similar to what one would have found in the physics honors courses in years past. So perhaps talking to students about how they did in that particular course and how they navigated, whether they enjoyed the course or found it to be too challenging or too easy, uh, would be a good place to start in terms of making your course decision. Science, like other subject areas, have a waiver process. If your student does not meet the prerequisite numbers or uh, re receive the teacher recommendation, there is a waiver process that they will be able to engage in. That waiver will be available to them starting on April 15th, and it will uh, conclude on April 30th. For science specifically, there is no particular course prerequisite. All science subjects have a waiver limit of 75% in your previous year science course, but otherwise we do leave the option for you to choose your course of study for your student um, uh, pretty much wide open. So as I finish up science, I also will be finishing up uh, for our presentation uh, in your eighth grade parent night. I want to thank you again for coming. Uh, look forward to meeting your students next year with all uh, hopefulness that that will be in person with some semblance of normalcy from our school year uh, of the past. Thanks again for joining us in this presentation and look forward to interacting with you. If you have questions, please look for uh, information on each of the supervisors to contact them and reach out with your questions individually. Thank you.